I want to thank each and every one of you for what you're doing by being here in the convention, uh, taking time away from, from work, taking time away from family to, uh, to throw a few punches, because uh, we have to this, uh, this election cycle to ensure that we elect the right kind of leadership in Washington, D.C. and also in Austin. Um, the work that you're doing is, is going a long way. One message that I wanted to convey is that after the primary season, um, I thought it was important to convey the message that we need to lock arms. Um, I happen to support Ted for, for U.S. Senate, and I know there are um, some supporters of, of, of Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst. But we as Republicans have to be mindful that our mission this fall is, is to elect the right leaders. And so um, in, in conversations throughout the state, I remind folks that we have to, we have to lock arms. Uh, we have to reach out to the Tea Party. We have to reach out to Blue Dog Democrats, uh, to moderates, and, and get everybody um, under, under the Big Ten to, to win this, uh, this fall. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I think my value add, and it's very difficult following a uh, presidential candidate, so I'm going to give you a hard time now and see. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, the future of the Republican Party and why I'm personally excited about it. Um, as was alluded to, to have a young, energetic, enthusiastic Hispanic as our party's nominee for the U.S. Senate uh, means a lot. I think it speaks to the, the direction of the party. I think it speaks to the future of the state of Texas. Um, and the fact that he's uh, willing to throw a punch or two to fight for our, our conservative values, which, which I'm excited. But what's more exciting is that he's not going to be alone in Washington, D.C. If you look at the composition of members of Congress under the age of 40, an overwhelming majority are Republican. And that the average age of a member of Congress um, within the Republican caucus is eight years younger than that of the Democrats. So it's... <laughs> So basically, it's young Republicans that are leading the charge on entitlement reform in Washington, D.C. Um, I happen to be the national chairman of a, a political action committee called NAFPAC, which, which is focused on engaging younger professionals in the uh, political process. And on an anecdotal basis, we've already seen a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for the selection of, of Paul Ryan. Um, I can't speak highly enough of what he brings to the table um, at a grassroots level for the party and getting uh, new folks to the polls. Um, I think many young Americans agree with the notion that we're more likely to see a UFO than a social security check. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, and as Americans in our own household, when we see a crisis, when we see a, a, a disaster on the horizon, and we have time to prepare for it, we usually do whatever we can to avoid that disaster. Why can't the most powerful, most wealthy country in the world do the same? And so that's what Paul Ryan stands for with respect to Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, which represents over 60% of our budget. And as we look at the debt clock, as you all saw on the uh, convention floor last night, uh, we're close to $16 trillion. The Congressional Budget Office already estimates that we're looking at doubling that amount uh, just in 12 years. And as Comptroller Combs referred to before, we're already at 100% of our GDP uh, being, being issued in Debt. So the, these are grim solutions. I think young Americans see this crisis on the horizon. They're willing to uh, join and, and, and sacrifice. Uh, just including myself, uh, our 9-11 generation has stepped up, completely servicing two foreign wars um, and numerous conflicts abroad, um, completely based on a voluntary service. Uh, record applications to the CIA and FBI after 9-11. Uh, after and numerous, um, numerous deployments in inner city schools. So I think young Americans in my generation, even though we're viewed as being cynical and we're skeptical of, of politics, I think we, we understand sacrifice. Um, and that's why we support a guy like you know, Paul Ryan, and that's why I think younger Americans, as we've seen in some of the polling data, are going to make the difference um, in this election. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, HRT and MAPEC, because I thought it would be important to, to touch on those two, because Steve, I think, has laid out a vision for uh, making Texas and continuing it as, as a red state. And, you know, at MathPack, what we're doing is, is reaching out to, to younger Americans. I think a lot of folks um, in, in my generation thought that President Obama would be a moderate and that he would move to the middle. Um, and they basically fell uh, prey to the rhetoric of, of 2008. And I can't tell you how many times that, I, whether it be Texas or Florida, 
and the key battleground states that Senator Cintron referred to, that folks come to us and say, look, I not only gave money and voted for President Obama, but I've been so disaffected with his policies that I not only am I going to join the Republican Party of Texas, but I'm going to, I'm going to give a check. I'm going to do whatever it takes to win this race. And we're already seeing this in the, in the polling data. With respect to HRT, which is uh, Hispanic Republicans of Texas, an organization that I'm involved with um, in Texas, we're, we're rolling up our sleeves and doing the dirty work in, in Hispanic outreach. And we're going to be collaborating with the Republican Party and helping identify, recruit, and, and support qualified candidates to go run for office. In the State House, we had no Hispanics um, in the last election cycle in 2010. We now have seven, one of which is uh, sitting before me today, Aaron Pena. Um, we, we were supporting Raul Torres for, for State Senate, Woo! so we could very well look at that. And, uh, for those of you all in Corpus Christi, I highly urge you to go out and support um, his efforts because we need to get him in there. Um, and then, of course, having Ted at the top of the ticket um, has been helpful to us, um, and not only at HRT, but for, for the party as a whole. Um, with that, I, I thought I'd give a, a brief Bush family update because I, I still get a lot of questions about, um, about what, what my uncle and what my dad are up to. Um, first, I'd start off with my grandfather, who is my hero. Um, I, I, I think <laughs> In my opinion, um, and as a veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom, I, I look up to the World War II generation as the greatest generation that our country has ever produced. Um, and so for a Navy war veteran to be picked up in a Seahawk 60 HH and be dropped at the deck of the CBN 77, a nuclear powered aircraft carrier off the coast of Maine this summer was a true treat for him. Uh, he, he got to uh, go with my grandmother, uh, Barbara Bush, who still wears the pants in the, in the Bushman. <laughs> <laughs> with, my, with my uncle and Aunt Laura, and it was quite the, quite the treat for him. They had a, a great time. Um, my Uncle George and Aunt Laura, a lot of, I guess we, we're open to media here, so I, I should probably measure my remarks. <laughs> Basically, a lot has been made about his, um, about his, his absence at the convention. And basically, he wanted to, to stay away from the fanfare and allow the current nominee, Governor Romney, to outline his vision clearly without the fanfare and, in his words, the swamp of, of politics. But make no mistake, if called to serve, he will help out the governor, and he'll do whatever it takes to make sure that we change the occupant of the White House. Um, <laughs> with respect to Dad, you know, a lot of, a lot of speculation about him being on the ticket, and uh, I was right along in saying that, that he wouldn't be selected, nor was he seeking it, but he's still focused on delivering the great state of Florida to the Republican. Um, as was mentioned, we'll be heading up Hispanic outreach in the state along with Senator Rubio. Uh, he'll also be the point man on education reform issues. In fact, he'll be hosting a panel uh, later today with respect to, to those issues and making sure that our inner city public school systems produce what we need them to produce in order to be competitive in the global marketplace. Um, and so with that, I, I thank each and every one of you for what you do. I think the options are pretty clear. Um, in this election cycle. I'm not the most seasoned guy around, but, but I can say that there's really two choices in this. We can move towards a collectivist, socialist path where we have, we're encountering one of the arguably the most left triumvirate of leadership um, within the Democratic Party since FDR in the form of Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and President Obama. And on one other side, we have a path to prosperity, a, a realistic and sober assessment of our fiscal positioning as a country, and considering the fact that, uh, that there are serious changes in our country, we need to make sure that we accept, uh, accept and elect the leadership to make that happen. So I thank each and every one of you for what you do, and thank you, Steve, for your leadership. Thank you.